Why everything you know about gangs is wrong. I share a story with many young people growing up in London and other cities. I've lost someone to youth violence. When I was 15, a childhood friend of mine was shot and killed. A year later, I set up an organisation to tackle gang culture and that's when I realised that there are a lot of misconceptions out there. Like, gangs are what they say they are. When you hear the word gang, what do you think of? Is it the Met Police whose own officers have described themselves as the biggest gang in town? Or is it one of these? See you at the, crossroads, crossroads. the thing is, the long, vague government definition ends up labelling loads of young people as gang members who don't actually see themselves as such. Just being related to or being friends with someone who has been identified by the authorities as a gang member can be enough whether you have a criminal history or not. Text messages, appearing in music videos together or using certain lyrics in their music have all been used to prove gang membership in court cases. And let's take the Met's database of all the people that they believe to be gang members. It's not clear how you earn yourself a place on it, but a Freedom of Information request in 2014 revealed that there are only 439 white people on it. Yes, the Met believe that there are only 439 white people in the whole of London who are engaged on an organised basis in violence, criminal offending and gang membership. Really? That means that 78% of the people participating in organised criminal activity, such as drug dealing, human trafficking, robbery, fraud and football hooliganism are all black. So why then might these figures sound believable to some people? Well, that brings us to another myth only black men are involved with gangs. It's not just the police who are guilty of institutional racism. The media plays a role in pushing out this narrative too. A study conducted by Cardiff University found that close to seven in 10 stories of black young men and boys related in some form to crime. In reality, research shows that young people who get involved in gang culture share similar levels of social, economic and educational disadvantage, whatever their background. This belief that gang culture is a black issue allows racist rhetoric such as black people are naturally more violent to poison society and leads to the high levels of stop and search among black men and boys. Instead of race, let's focus on the issues that actually lead people to join gangs such as wanting to belong to a group or coming from a deprived background. And finally, you might think that if you end up jailed for a gang related murder, it's because you've killed somebody. Well, actually no. Someone else could have done the deed and you could get charged for just being there. Thanks to something known as joint enterprise, between 2005 and 2013, almost 500 people were convicted of murder as secondary parties, many of which were recorded as gang related. These people received the same sentences as the person who actually did the killing and sometimes even more. While in some situations this may be appropriate, it has also led to gross miscarriages of justice. So why does all this matter? Well, Public opinion has the power to influence policy and the way that issues such as gang culture are addressed. In 21st century Britain, it's absolutely crazy that young people are being murdered on our streets. We need to change people's opinions on gangs so that we can demand an approach that works. To tackle the violence, we must tackle the root causes first. Racism is a business. For centuries, it has underpinned global economic exploitation. And like any successful business idea, it needs great marketing, PR and advertising to ensure lasting success.